Live from the heart of the Blue Ridge, Roanoke, Virginia. It's the Just Bernard Show with host Bernard Alvarez. Join Bernard as he shares topics that reveal the real matrix and empower your human experience, including world liberty, the esoteric, suppressed technologies, spiritual ascension, and human consciousness. Humanity has awakened, and our time has come our full potential. And now, live from the Star City, your host, Bernard Alvarez. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Just Bernard Show. We are, well, we're simulcasting on several platforms around the web, from Facebook to YouTube to my website, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and I think that's all I can remember. But uh, I'm really enjoying having these uh, several platforms that we get to share this information on and to be able to chat with you uh, live uh, across multiple platforms. Anyway, it's been a very, very, very warm week here in Roanoke, Virginia. I don't know how everybody else is handling the heat. Uh, we did have a very interesting cosmic event with the Neowise Comet, and unfortunately, I missed it. I forgot all about it, and I've been watching everybody post pictures uh, of what they saw, so I'm so happy some of you were able to see that. Uh, as well, I did have some really really interesting good news which i'm going to share with you a little bit more on a little bit later uh, a few days ago though to speaking of good news as well a few days ago i celebrated was it 14 years on youtube can you believe i've been doing this for 14 years and uh, I didn't really celebrate much. I figure I celebrate, you know, the 15, the 20. So maybe next year we'll do something, something big. I'll do like a marathon show or something. But um, anyway, uh, a few weeks ago, or maybe a little bit longer than that, I was contacted uh, by this lovely woman named Sophie Jones. And she shared some information with me about her uh, new book called I Saw the Future. And it, and I've been it watching was very everybody interesting post how this pictures all fell into place uh, of what because they saw. Uh, last so I'm week, so happy some did. Uh, uh, we had a gentleman that was talking about being able to communicate uh, with other dimensions via uh, this uh, technology that they're working on, the soul phone, which you know we all saw that last week. And we were talking about uh, multi-dimensional consciousness and bilocation. I'm like. Well, it just so happens next week we have uh, Sophie Jones coming to join us about that. So let me tell you a little bit about Sophie before I bring her on. Uh, in 2012, uh, during traveling in Australia, she uh, discovered from a roommate that they would constantly sleepwalk. Uh, this led her to investigate what they were saying at night. From here, they discovered the endless entertainment of dreams, for the first time in their late 20s, after having multiple spontaneous out-of-body experiences, or OBs, uh, since she was 18 months old, uh, she would go on to consciously control the MB OBEs. Uh, she has two books. The first one came out in 2019 called Shared Dreams, How to Enter Someone Else's Dreams Through Shared Dreaming, and her newest one called I Saw the Future. In addition to her books, uh, she offers a free forum uh, for those wanting to discuss their experiences with others at uh, IRememberMyDreams.com. And boy, could I get into a whole dream thing. But we'll have to do that for another show. But welcome to the show, Sophie. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it sounds like it's going to be a very interesting uh, half hour here. So, Sophie, why don't you tell us a little bit about um, one of your experiences or what was it that really captured your attention about this whole idea of bilocation and transdimensional experiences? How was it for you? Yes, yeah, so when I was around 12 years old, I got my top ear pierced and I passed out because I used to pass out in heat quite a lot. And all of a sudden, my consciousness shifted and I was above the city I was in. But I was actually looking down on myself in my 
bad in my two brothers. And it was really bizarre because I could be up in the air down at myself, but at the same time shift to the conversation. So I had this like dual awareness. And I guess that's why they say in alchemy, as above, so below, maybe. So and I had this then like, dual awareness that happened. I kind of, other than when you mentioned, I went, went to Australia and then I started um, paying attention to my dreams when I came back because I lived for four years in a flat by myself so I started getting into dreaming meditation and then one day I had a dream where I was with the dream character and we solved the equation for simultaneously existing in more than one dimension at once and we were so excited and I had sleep paralysis I don't know if you if you had sleep paralysis it's like horrendous isn't it um so I thought nothing more of the simultaneously existing in more than one dimension at once dream. And then a couple months later, I went to a course because I love reading about everything related to like all the topics you do. Cause I think it's, it's good to know how to do something, but you can always learn from people. Even if you know how to do something, there's always a better technique, a better way of doing something. So I went on this course and they talked me through the usual way that you actually project. But because I had people around me, I was feeling their, like hearing them breathe and paying attention to them. But all of a sudden I like shifted to this planet and I'm on this planet whilst also being aware that I'm lying down and there's people around me. So it's a weird, it's a, it's a really weird feeling. It's like you're two heads in one and I'm trying to hold on to this planet. I've actually, I did a sketch of it in my book. So there was this like little tower thing and then there were two moons and I'm trying to hold on to the place that I'm, I'm trying to hold on to this planet I'm on because I'm looking at all of this and like, wow, this is fantastic. But at the same time, my consciousness is pulling me back to the room mm. and I'm like, oh, that's like so bizarre. And when I eventually lost all that part of consciousness on this planet and I was fully back in the room. When we woke up, I told the instructor and he said that was by location. And I thought, oh, because I had read loads of books on astral projection. And I remember, I, I don't know if you've heard of these stories, but there's accounts of people reporting, seeing people they know that walk past them and um, doctors that have been seen walking down the streets of London whilst also being in their doctor's surgery. Now, the thing that gets really interesting is last year, because I've kind of been out of spirituality for a year because with work and stuff, sometimes you go in and out of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I started getting back into it last year. And my dad rung me up complaining, saying, you didn't tell me you were back in London. I said, I'm in New York, dad. He said, no, I saw you, Crystal. It's clear as day. I saw you. And I said, what? What it was, he saw my doppelganger because the time he swears blind that he saw me, my heart rate was 43 beats per minute and I was in deep sleep. And oh he God. yeah, and he swears clear as day. He said, you walked in front of me at the traffic lights. And he said, he was frozen because he was thinking, why is my daughter in front of me right now? Why hasn't she called me? Like, and he just, so when, of course, he rung me, I had to convince him, no, I'm in New York. I was in deep sleep. And I've had other experiences where um, you can, and you can like shift your perspective. And it's kind of like, as if you can, it's different types of it. You've got the bilocation where you can uh, now and then also somewhere else. But you've also got the bilocation where you're lying down and you go into your doppelganger. But when you go into your doppelganger, you don't usually remember it because it's your astral body. But the time when I did project to another planet, that was pure drill consciousness. But another time back in, I think it was 2016, which actually is the title of my book, I Saw the Future. I was meditating and all of a sudden my consciousness just shifted and 
I was in what I, you know, when you get feelings and you just feel like you know something. So I felt like I was in an intergalactic spaceship because part of the reason I was in a silver suit and I had this little bob and I was this person, but not, I wasn't me, but I was, if that makes sense. It was like my consciousness shifted, but I was someone else. And also I had this superior intelligence. So you know how right now, you know, two plus two equals four. You just know it. Right. Right. So I, all of a sudden, knew all these mathematical equations I can't even comprehend now I don't even remember what the hell they would be and I'm walking down this um corridor and I'm I'm just like wow I know how this corridor is constructed I knew all the mechanical engineering of how it had been put together I knew that we were flying through space and and then I thought hang on Sophie Jones and I thought to earth and in a Lit of a second, I knew everything about Earth's history. I just knew all the evolution of mankind. I knew everything. And it was just so intense. And I came back and I thought, I feel so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what led me then to realize that actually we do have this, um, like, ability to go to different places and, and I wonder I don't know what your thoughts on it are um I wonder if that's what happens when we have past life experiences because I had a dream once that went on for 40 years and I was this guy and what's interesting is I actually studied accountancy when I was 18 and I had to um give it up because I just didn't get it in in this dream this would have been 10 years later I was an accountant and I remember having his nine to five life for 40 years, even experiencing like the joy of his daughter being born. Um, now, I did an MBA recently and I got 92% for my accounting and finance. Oh my goodness. Like, how, how do you explain that? <laughs> how, how do you go from failing something to... It so it, well, it sounds just like, um, like you are tapping into your, well, your super conscious. Uh, right. I, uh, you know, it's almost, for me, I find that uh, when we are getting that type of information that we will not, uh, uh, that we don't have in our daily waking consciousness, that's our, our intent, our higher self, our infinite self that's tapping into either other lifetimes, like you said, or even future lifetimes. Yeah. And uh, there's something to be said for the idea that there, you know, there is no time and space in these realms because... 40 years can be, you know, 40 seconds, especially in the dream world. And yeah. so it, you said you, it was a 40 year dream. What, what was that experience like for you? Like in oh. short, the beginning, the, well, the beginning and the end, what, yeah. when did you realize you were in a 40 year dream and when, what, what did it feel like when you came out of it? Okay. So when I was in it, like you don't know, it's as if it's your life. So I remember I was him and I'm there and then I met his wife and then what I remember most about it was a nine to five job and I remember doing the accounting and it was so boring and I remember thinking oh five minutes until I could leave like I was actually going through the emotions of how long until I leave nearly home time and then um I'd go back and then I'd have something to eat because he had a really, it was a really stable life, not not like mine, <laughs> um, where I'm all over the place. He was really stable. And then I married his wife. I had the, you know, the special night time with right, him. Right. Um, and then I remember, I remember crying. Like I cried with pride when his first was born, the girl. Like it's really weird because I can still feel the, it's like I can I've never, I don't have kids and like I can feel what he felt, if you know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it was just so intense. It was just so, so yeah, so his daughter's born, then he had a son and then I'm still nine to five if I finished this um, job yet. And then it was his daughter's 21st birthday and I was just filled with pride watching her like, ah, oh, that's my offspring. I've produced her. So I'm this guy. I'm his mind. And then all of a sudden, I just woke up, just like that, woke up. 
And I remember being in bed and I was like, I've just had a dream that lasted longer than my, yeah. Yeah. And it's, when something like that happens, you just think, and you just think, okay, right now, like if you're having difficulties in your life or you're not, like you just realize actually you can't hold on to your current life right now because there's so many more. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it is, like you say, it's your ones that are coming up or whether you tap into someone else's, but it was everything. It, it was longer than my, because at the time I think I was 28. So it was longer than what I had lived. Wow. Wonderful. That's really amazing. Well, you've opened up a whole can of worms and many, many more questions for me, which we're not going to have time for. But um, so now after all of these experiences and, and in writing uh, these two books, uh, do you have your own specific method that you use to intentionally uh, create o OBEs or out-of-body experiences? Yeah. So I found the best time, the best technique I use um, where I've had like the biggest out of body experiences once I went into super consciousness and um, what I do is I will think of my chakras so I will lie down and I will focus on the base chakra and spin it around and imagine a vortex and then I'll go up each chakra and then if I can do that with each one spinning 10 times I'll increase the number but when I can do that for a period of about half an hour that's when I find I have OBEs naturally. So I had a massive OBE when I was doing that. Because usually, you know when your mind sometimes wanders if you don't really keep up with meditation? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> well, when I had this super big OBE, I had been doing it for 30 minutes straight every single day for 30 days consistently. And I was also writing down my dreams every single day. And it, I was at a period of like six, remembering up to six dreams a night like every single dream, how to remember. And I remember I woke up and I thought, oh, the ceiling's closer. And when you obviously come out of your body, when you first start to become aware of astral projecting, you get this like, oh, and then you get pulled back in. So you've yeah. got to try and stay calm. So I'm there and I'm calm and I'm looking around the room and there's this solar system. And I think, oh, so I, I fly towards it. And then all of a sudden, I'm just flying through our solar system. And I'm just like this, because it wasn't, sometimes when you astral project, you have an astral body, but this was more just like a consciousness. It was really, it was a different type of astral projection. And then I'm flying through the solar system and then I fly through the galaxy and then I'm just through the universe and I can see all these mini little galaxies and I'm just like, oh. And it was just like the most peaceful experience ever. But it was like, everything but nothing like you knew every single thing possible about everything but at the same time you could just switch it off it, it was really really that was amazing and when I came out of that my friend said oh my god your energy field like because he actually worked for GCHQ um the secret service people and he said he said yeah they do you because he would actually be able to project out of his body but my sorry I've gone off tangent so my technique i recommend to people is focus on your chakras and build it up and spin it around in a vortex for each one of the seven and then um try to do an energy field of protection around you because i think that's quite important because when you start to ash your project and you start to build up your dream um i don't know what you think but you do kind of start to encounter quite negative entities yeah. um so so i try to now i do a force field around me and then I do a second one then I do a third one so that only what you want can penetrate it and when you get to the point of being able to do all seven chakras and you can hold that consistently for 30 minutes you will be able to astral project and I think the reason for that is because you're holding your consciousness and you're holding that because if you remember when I said I bilocated to the other planet I was trying to hold my concentration and for me astral project in is all about holding your concentration if you can hold your concentration i.e meditation without another thought entering then you when you dream you'll find you'll become conscious that you're dreaming 
when you wake up outside of your astral body, you will be like, oh, I'm outside of my astral body. Because often we all astral project. It's just remembering it, right? Uh, I agree. Absolutely. And, you know, you, you touched on one of the things uh, about dreaming and OBE is um, how many times uh, there are instances where we are learning things, either from uh, other entities or ETs or transdimensionals or spirit guides. And uh, I, I'm wondering uh, how has that experience been for you? Oh, gives me a shivers. Um, <laughs> so basically it's all... I feel like I, as soon as I started remembering my dreams, I then started becoming conscious of the things that they were, they were teaching me. And then it started to actually manifest in my dreams or outside of the dream world. Um, so I remember being in one dream and there was this voice and he was saying, Sophie, if you want something to appear, you must do this. And I'm like, who are you? And he's like, do not um, question me, just do it. And then they tell me to do things like, okay, so you want the car to work, just imagine it's working. Don't, um, you've got to genuinely believe you're not in a dream, but you are in a dream. And they teach mm -hmm. you things, and then you start to learn how to control the dream world. And also ESP, they were teaching, I was finding, I was in um, class, classes where I was being taught how to have shared dreams with people, with other dream characters. And then in physical life right here, right now, I was able to start entering into people's dreams. So it's like when I was saying about the accounting dream, the 40 years, you might not consciously be aware of it, but it goes in there, it goes into your subconscious and what okay. happens is it naturally comes out that's what i find yeah absolutely and so as as we're starting to run out of time though i do want to ask you a little bit more about the new book i saw the future is that a little bit about what you're talking about here is that the um was that a by location experience or tell us a little bit about the book and what it's what it's what's in there for us yeah so that's the um what the type was based on that's when i was walking down the corridor so the book basically features every single one of my um, out-of-body experiences or s spiritual experiences since um, over a two-year period. So I do give a little bit of early history into how I had out-of-body experiences spontaneously as a child, but then I really go at it with two years' worth of um, recordings because I've recorded everything over a two-year period when I was living in isolation. I just wrote everything down and that's actually what led me not this book but another book I how to remember your dreams yeah I wanted I wanted to start to track my dreams in certain ways and I wanted it to be a specific size so I started to actually create my own dream journal so that I in it um, so that's how that one came about. And then I started getting into shared dreams and then I would write down how that came about. But this one basically is everything. It's all my experiences of shared dreaming, all my experiences of psychic stuff, anything, anything to do with spirituality that happened over that two year right. period. And it also touches on my dad's near death experience because he actually was murdered, but survived. And he was pronounced dead. And he actually... Um, the doctor's wait. nope, he's dead, gone, because he had his skull crushed. And then all of a sudden, he sat up in bed, just sat oh. up. And when he, went, when he was murdered, it was all blackness. However, before that, he would actually die and come back to life because his heart would stop and he's actually had a pacemaker. And when that would happen, it would be all peaceful and calm. But when he was murdered, it was the opposite. He said it was just pure darkness. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It's very interesting. So there's another uh, outside story not uh, of, your, yeah. of your father. That sounds yeah. very interesting. I have actually got a video of him. He's really hard to talk to. He like jokes a lot. And I've got a video of him on my YouTube where he does talk about it. Um, it is quite hard to listen to because like I said, he jumps around because he's got ADHD. But if anybody wants to listen to his experience then it is on the and what's the uh, the name of the youtube channel um inside my dream brain 
inside my dream brain. Okay, very good. Well, I'll make sure I post it in the, um, uh, the descriptions of this. But uh, anyway, so your new book is available. I saw the future is available so it does. on uh, Amazon. <laughs> And it's in paperback and I saw it's on Kindle. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Hello, so this and, is uh, my... what's a great um, either a Facebook page or YouTube, I, I mean, or a website where they can learn more about your work? Yeah, so um, I remember my dreams.com and also dream to innovate because what I want to start to do is I want to start to, because I'm actually doing research on it at the moment. Um, I want to start to do that Nikola Tesla type of stuff where people start to use their dreams to invent things. Wonderful. Wow. But my That's YouTube, great. yeah, my YouTube is the one where I like to speak to people because I, I love to hear about other people's experiences. Right, right. Good. Okay. So if they want to write you, the messaging system on YouTube is probably the best way then. Yes. Yeah. Or my email, which is um, s3pHY at googlemail.com. Very good. <laughs> well, I thank you so much for joining us today, Sophie. It was very, very interesting. I love talking about this kind of stuff. And uh, maybe I'll have to come have you come back on in a few months so we can really get into the whole idea of dreams as I have a whole a whole uh, experience there myself. We can have a little discussion about that. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. Sorry, I yapped a bit more. I wanted to, I had a few questions for you, so I didn't oh, no, get no. <laughs> <laughs> Well, just hold on. Uh, we'll talk a minute after we stop recording, but uh, hold on. And uh, I just want to thank you so much uh, for joining us, everybody. Sophie Jones. And again, uh, you can find out more about her work. Uh, and I thought I wrote down the email, but it's in the description. But before we go, everyone, I just wanted to thank you. And I wanted to give you a, a big announcement that I'm really excited about. Uh, as you know, my Facebook page has been around for, what, 10 years, 11 years, 12 years. I don't even know how long. Um, and it's grown pretty big. We have, you know, over a quarter of a million followers there and fans and lots of discussion going on and whatnot. And um, uh, for years, I've been trying to get them to allow it to become what they call a premium page. And out of nowhere last week, uh, Facebook has officially made the Bernard Alvarez Facebook page a premium page. And what that means is that now I can have a supporter community. And I did a, uh, what we call a soft rollout uh, of the supporter community. Yes, uh, you can become a supporter for uh, 4 dollars a month. And with that, you'll get um, discounts to my live classes. You'll get discounts on recorded classes and um, uh, premium video, just all kinds of stuff. And I haven't started rolling all that out yet, uh, but I did want to let you know that if you uh, become a supporter on my Facebook page, which is Bernard, wait, facebook.com slash Bernard Alex Alvarez, if you become a supporter there, um, I'm going to sign you up. Uh, for our first private uh, video chat. Well, it's me video, but us chatting on the chat. Uh, and I'm going to maintain that down to 10 people. So the first 10 people that sign up as a supporter, we're going to have a little private discussion, just uh, the 11 of us. And as well, you will receive, I believe it's uh, $30 off the upcoming online spiritual retreat that we're doing on August 1st. Uh, I believe we're doing it for $49. So actually, you're doing it for $20. <laughs> anyway, I'm really excited about it. I will go more into that uh, later this week. And also, I just wanted to let you know there will not be a broadcast next week. Uh, I have my play very, very excited full about right it. Now, I will go I more into that. Um, so I'm sorry, guys. I will miss you. No, there will not be a repeat. Uh, sometimes I'll do a, a, an archive repeat. Uh, but there, there just will not be a show next week. But I might pop in and, and say hello and talk to you all a little bit more. Anyway, have a wonderful week, everyone. I love you, and uh, I'll see you in two weeks. Bye-bye now. Live from the heart of the...